everyone. I'm Nina Zakarenko. I'm really glad to be here today. This is my first All Things Open. Even though I lost my voice, I'm excited about speaking to you today. I'm a longtime developer and Pythonista. In the past, I've written software at companies like Reddit, Meetup, HBO. These days, I'm really excited to have joined the cloud developer advocacy team at Microsoft. It's an incredible team, and my focus is on making the Azure experience an absolute pleasure for Python developers everywhere. <clears throat> Today, I'm here to talk to you about five things you didn't know about Python. A freebie here, Python is 28 years old. Who knew that? One person, awesome. And according to Stack Overflow, it is the fastest growing language. There are a lot of misconceptions about Python from the early days. Things like, it's only good for scripting, it's only good for the web. These things are just not true. In 10 minutes, I'm gonna change your mind. The first thing you might not have known about Python is that it empowers scientists and it drives discoveries forward. This is Concordia Station in Antarctica. It's extremely isolated. There's no sun there for up to three months in a row. It's the closest analog that we have on Earth to a base on another planet. It's a research facility that helps us study future deep space missions. And Python is used heavily there. It's used for reading sensors, for processing data, for visualizations, for graphing, charts, and experiments, such as drilling into ice almost two miles underground in order to analyze air that was trapped there one million years ago. In a keynote given at EuroPython this summer, the scientists shared that they use Python all day long and they use it for most of their programming tasks. This means that Python might help us go to space one day. Python is amazing for data science. It's used to process massive amounts of data. It's helped in breakthroughs all over the world, such as this particular one in gravitational wave astronomy. Python was used in a variety of ways for this breakthrough, from operating the detectors to analyzing massive amounts of data to pushing alerts to the astronomers and sharing results. There are incredible open source tools like Jupyter Notebooks, Pandas, NumPy, SciPy, PyTorch. They're all amazing tools for artificial intelligence and machine learning. They're all Python and they're all open source. This year's Nobel Prize winner in economics, Paul Romer, he used Python for his work. Paul has an excellent blog post where he talks about how the open nature of things like Jupyter Notebooks drove the project to success ahead of its proprietary competitors. He says, in science, anyone can experiment. In open source, anyone can access the facts of the code. Python is also used to create incredible games and art. EVE Online is a massive multiplayer online game. It's set in space. The client and server code are written in a variant of Python called Stackless Python that uses lightweight threads. During its peak of popularity, it had hundreds of thousands of players. One of Eve's creators said, Python enabled us to create Eve online, a massive multiplayer game in record time. The flexibilities of Python have enabled us to quickly improve the game experience based on player feedback. This is Super Potato Bro. It's a platformer. You're a baked potato and you're fighting against an evil ladle who's trying to kidnap all your friends and turn them into soup. <laughs> the whole thing is written in Python, 100% Python and Pygame. And you can buy it on Steam now for about four bucks. Processing is an open source language that's geared towards visual art. It allows you to write incredible animations in Java. But thanks to something called Jython, which is an implementation of Python that runs on the JVM, it's an open source project, uh, and thanks to an open source project called processing.py, you can now write code for processing entirely in Python. Python also lets you automate your home, your connected home. Everything from your lights, to your vacuum cleaner, to your internet connected rice cooker. Yes, that's actually a real thing that you can buy. With Home Assistant. Home Assistant is an open source automation library 
It puts local control and privacy first. And we all know why privacy is important these days. It's written in Python. It's powered by a world of community, a worldwide community of tinkerers and DIY enthusiasts. It has 18,000 stars on GitHub. It's perfect to run on a Raspberry Pi or on a local server. It has incredible dashboards and integrations. I highly recommend you check it out. Python can scale. As an interpreted language, it can be a little bit slower than others, but the advantages strongly outweigh the disadvantages. It's easy to write, it's easy to read, and development speed can sometimes really be more important than performance. Instagram hit one billion active users. That's billion with a B. It also features the largest deployment of the Django web framework, which is written entirely in Python. Dropbox, Python powers both the backend and the client. Guido Van Rossum, Python's creator, has worked there since approximately 2013. Dropbox engineers frequently write blog posts and give talks that highlight how they optimize Python for performance. Lately, they have been moving a handful of performance critical services to other languages, but that doesn't mean that Python is going anywhere. I like this quote. If Python didn't work at scale to begin with, there would be nothing to improve upon because Dropbox wouldn't have lasted long enough to face this problem. Lots of companies use Python to different extents. They all have an incredible amount of users. They all tend to gravitate towards having red in their logo. Who knows? Quora had 200 monthly uniques last year. Netflix relies on Python to power its data analysis on the server side and a few other use cases. When Netflix surveyed their internal engineers, those engineers cited that they like Python because of its standard library, because of the active development community, because of the rich variety of third-party libraries. Those were the biggest advantages. Reddit was built on Python since 2005, and it has more than 500 million visitors every month. That makes it one of the top five visited websites in the US. Many people know that Python can run on a Raspberry Pi, but actually there's a whole ecosystem of interesting hardware platforms that run Python. That's because of MicroPython and CircuitPython. There, it's a lean, efficient implementation of Python. MicroPython includes a subset of the standard library. It has lots of great things in it, such as an interactive prompt, list comprehensions, exception, exception handling, and a lot more. It's op optimized to run on microcontrollers, and that means that it fits, uh, and it runs with just uh, 16 kilobytes of RAM. That's incredible. CircuitPython is an Adafruit port of MicroPython. They're both open source projects and very, very active. This is an Adafruit Trinket M0. It's a tiny microcontroller board. It's as big as a quarter. Actually, holding one right here. They're very low cost, under $10. It features a Cortex M0 ARM processor, which is one of the smallest ARM processors available. And this little thing ships with CircuitPython right out of the box. You can plug it in and edit a main.py file. Another Adafruit product I absolutely love is called the Hollow Wing. It's a spooky development kit with lots of extras. It's got a full color screen, a light sensor in it, a speaker, a little uh, light poly battery charging, an accelerometer. And my personal favorite feature, it has four fang teeth and those are analog capacitive touch inputs right there on the bottom. There are plenty of other hardware platforms that are focused on education that run MicroPython, such as the BBC Microbit, which was given to every 12 to 14 year old in the UK in 2016. With Python, you can create incredible wearable projects. I made these earrings using an Adafruit Gemma M0 WS2812 LED rings and a tiny LiPoly battery. See if I can get them on. You guys see those? Yeah. My, 
My earrings run Python. <laughs> the, uh, the code and circuit diagram is available on my GitHub. Kind of uh, see the guts here. Just uh, LEDs on the front. There's a Gemma M0 on the back and a tiny light poly battery. There's really no time like now to try Python. It's improving with every new release. Python is open at its core. It consists of an incredibly friendly, welcoming community. There's no time like now to take the leap. And if you can, maybe even consider contributing back to the language itself. If you want to learn more about what Python is, uh, a what Microsoft is doing with Python, check out this link, bit.ly slash atopython. You'll find a link to the slides in my Twitter, on my Twitter account in just a few minutes. You can follow me at NNJA. And thank you all so much for your time. <laughs>